Well, hello everyone, hello, and look at this. I said a while ago, you might not remember it, but I did say it, that if I didn't completely fall in love with my previous arrangement, having the other one of these collier cases down here propped up with a piece of wood under it so it was at a shallow angle, I said if I found that that was not suiting me, that I would get a dope fur base case. And there it is, the dope fur low cost base case, which is made of uh, unpainted plywood, unfinished on the outside. It's, uh, it's well made, it seems pretty sturdy. And uh, the back of it is a ledge that you can set another case on. They made it that way on purpose. It uh, doesn't come out as far as my other case. So I actually have room to put a key step in front of it. With even a little lane back there for the cables. And it fits on the table and it's not hanging over the edge. And I like that. The back row, I can actually see those modules. Um, the previous arrangement, the back row was kind of hard to see. At least sitting down, it was hard to see. Front row, eh, well, this is still, I'm, it's still new. I just put everything in here today. And I had to move some things around Firstly, because the way this is made, in order to have the front be as shallow as possible, they put the power distribution board back here. So it's uh, actually under the back row. The power for the front row is underneath the back row. And then the power for the back row is behind that one. And so a couple of these modules the power cable wasn't actually long enough to reach so I had to move a couple of things to the back move some couple of things to the front because of that issue and then I had to rearrange the back row mainly because microburst and these Befaco modules their bottom row of jacks is real close to the bottom and the plug heads stick out sort of over the top of whatever's at the top of this bottom row of modules. It's a little awkward, but I think I can work with most of this, but I needed to move Microburst away from Mixology because I always have things plugged in here and these jacks are right at the top of that module. Anyway, what we're listening to right now is conduit plugged directly into microburst and microburst is set all the way to wet so we are only hearing the effect and basically it is being triggered by a clock and the little granular windows those little granular hits is what we're hearing and the position is being controlled by the same CV it's a random going through the CVP I'm using it to control position here and time over here which means it's controlling the pitch as well as the microburst position and the filter is being controlled by the mix out of the A1431 that's triggered by grids reset channel uh, grids channel 1 I just turned it on the top half of the LXD and what it's receiving is Chaos Nand, which I've tuned to give me a bass drum sound. And it's hitting very sparsely because 
my second channel, bottom half of the LXD, and it is the Tragotronic M669 receiving three, count them, three random voltages from the 4R, and that sounds like this. And it's, it's meandering all over the place from high to low, which is why I cut the bass drum down to very few events. Because it only needs a little bit to fill in the gaps. Now my channel three of grids is triggering streams, which is receiving metallic noise from Bastel Noise Square filtered through cinnamon which is receiving CV from channel 1 of the A1431 which as I mentioned is being triggered by the reset and that's that now I've got Mux Lyser running a sequence Same clock as what's triggering microburst. And I'm running that sequence into the precision adder. I'm also running key step into the precision adder. And then that output is controlling the pitch of lifeforms oscillators one and two gate from key step is going to the ADSR which is controlling the filter and the VCA as per the internal patch So basically, using the precision adder, I have this sequence as an arpeggio, and then I can control what key or what yeah, what key that arpeggio will be played around because I'm adding the key step voltage to the sequencer voltage. I'm not sure that's the right sound to go with this rhythm section, but um, I was just goofing around because of the new case, and I had room for key steps, so I set it up just to verify that I could. Anyway, that's a pretty funky beat, and it needs something. It needs something. Not necessarily this. Maybe. I don't know yet what to do with it. But I like where it's going so far. Anyway, uh, I'm running out of time. So I have to thank my patrons. Because once again, they uh, fronted the money that allowed me to purchase this. And the link to my Patreon is up there on the screen if you're interested in checking it out. There's not only music, but also furry cartoons. I keep saying I'm going to make a video about that. And I haven't yet. Anyway, the Patreon is there. There's also the Bandcamp, which is just music. Just the ones that I thought were the best. And you can listen three times for free without making any commitment whatsoever. I highly recommend it. Great way to check out uh, my finished recordings. Anyway, uh, thanks y'all for watching and I'll catch you next time.